Factors of remote instruction. As some schools are transitioning to remote instruction for maybe three to five days and back to the brick and mortar building, we want to have a plan and we want to ensure that our students don't experience much learning loss and we want to make it a smooth transition. So these are some actions that you could actually use during your remote instruction to make sure it's a smooth process and the students don't experience learning loss. So let's get right into it. First, of course, is communication. Let's post announcements daily to provide updates for our learners and our parents. Check in with them. And you may even want to refer, based off of their responses, you may want to refer some of the students to your guidance counselor or to eye care so they can get extra support while they're in that remote learning. So definitely check in with the students and make sure they're okay during this time. Also, you can make reminder posts because this is different for our learners. They may forget, they get off task. Put reminders of things they need to do, or you can even create a reminder video or an announcement video, letting the students know and the parents what's on task for today, what things they need to do. They would love to see it, and that way they can go back and rewind it and play the video so they don't have to ask you many questions. They'll be able to go back and repeat what you said. And some platforms that we are using for communication are Google Classroom, of course. And of course, if you would like to record your video, you can use Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, and just record yourself there. But you can also use your favorite screencasting tool to record a video for your students. You can even do Remind and Dojo, those favorite apps that you're already utilizing to actually continue to communicate with your parents and your learners during this time. And of course, we're all teaching. That's what we signed up for, we're teachers. So we're still using that tier one curriculum outlined by the district. And of course, all of that information is being dispersed through Google Classroom. The students are turning in their lessons and assignments there and the teacher posts the information there for our learners. And it's very important that we connect with our learners. Still wanna make connections with them, make sure we're available to connect with them, ask and answer questions, but also let them connect with their peers. Let them have discourse. They still need that during this time. So make sure there's opportunities for them to collaborate with their peers using platforms like Flipgrid, Google Meet, Jamboard, Nearpod provides the opportunity. You have your chat in your Google Meet or your Microsoft Teams that you can utilize. You have your Microsoft uh, resources that you can use and your Google resources that you use that is built for collaboration. So please allow time for the students to collaborate during this remote instruction as well. And last but not least, we still want to assess our students. Gathering that information is still important. Want to see, are they making growth? What interventions I need to provide to them? And you need to you will need to decide what tool you would actually use during this time to digitally assess your students. So you have some options, things like Nearpod, it has the quiz built in, the Kahoot. Students love Kahoot, so you can utilize that, quiz is, or you can give them projects to assess them. Whatever your favorite assessment tool is, utilize it during this time. Some other options are things like Google Forms, and of course the district does support Illuminate. So these are some factors to keep in mind when your school makes a transition to remote learning.